Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now tonight is Friday night, my wife is out with the girls and the kids are in bed and what that means is for me that typically leads to some sort of a project. Now today's project was a little bit mundane. It is the end of the Christmas season and I have an endless amount of boxes that I have to clean up from Christmas presents. So I set out today to provide you with a review of this Buck 830 Inferno. This is a blade from the company SK Blades. This is a buck knife that's been fabricated in a way to meet the specifications of SK Blades. So here you have S35 VN steel, some beautiful orange G10 liners, this gorgeous stonewash finish, and just something that has a bit of a signature look to it and something that you can only get from SK Blades. Now this doesn't always happen to me. It is very few and far between when I start a video with the intent of shooting one thing, but by the end of it, it is something completely different. But that's what happened today. So as I mentioned, I set out with the idea that after all of the cardboard cutting and all the different footage that I had associated with that, I thought I was going to use all of that towards a review video for this Buck Inferno. But instead, something really profound happened to me. I finally realized what it meant to use a blade to the point where there is actually edge damage and you can see it. I know that sounds a little bit funny. Yes, of course you can see blade damage but I'm going to show it to you in a way that you maybe have never seen it before. And if you're interested in seeing what I'm about to talk about, do me a favor. Stay tuned! So again, as I mentioned, I am going to show you the edge damage on this knife. Now it is not substantial. When you look at it with your naked eye, this edge looks to be close to perfect. Now I do have very good eyesight. I'm capable of seeing very minor details and minor blemishes, but it's nothing that's really alarming to me. When I check the overall sharpness of the blade and I feel it on my nail, it does slide just a little bit in some spots, but generally speaking, this is pretty sharp. Now with that said, I have essentially at this point simply strop the knife with a leather strop. I haven't done any sort of touch up with a ceramic rod or definitely not sharpening on any sort of diamond stone. Just simply a little bit of touch up to refine and hone the edge with this leather strop. So what you're going to see is a little bit of work that I've done to refine this edge just a bit but after all of that work not only on the cardboard but after carrying this knife as my EDC option for almost three months. But if I'm going to do that I need to give you a little bit of a bench test. So here we have a Mora Knives carving knife. Now this knife has not been used at all. It is literally brand new out of the box as of yesterday. So I did receive this in brand new condition straight from the factory and let's start here by taking a look at this edge. But before we do that I need to introduce to you the fold scope. Now I was going to keep this a little bit of a surprise. I was going to break it out at another point in time, but this is the time to introduce this. The fold scope is essentially a piece of paper that is an origami folding microscope. It sounds crazy and a little hard to believe. It cost this company a dollar to produce the actual microscope. So every microscope that is made costs the company around a dollar. Now you can't buy it for that amount. I paid more than that, but I thought this would be a great tool for us to use in future reviews to look at different things, get some different details, and that's exactly what we're going to do today while we look at the edges of these blades. So while getting into it, the fold scope does have different configurations, but here you will see the main fold scope. Now I am not going to use this particular piece today. The fold scope itself comes with a number of different adapters and lenses and I have taken one of the adapters and lenses and connected it to my phone. So my cell phone is now 
a microscope. It has the capability of getting down to some very fine detail. And as long as I'm careful and hold things a particular way with good light, you should be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So now that you've seen what I'm up to, let's get into the details on this Mora carving knife. So now just sitting here at my desk, I'm going to use a couple of my Thor Fire lanterns to provide me with the light I need for you to see this edge. So I'm going to get these set up in a little bit of a configuration here. Hopefully this will do what we need. And then grabbing the Mora here, I'm going to establish my phone and getting this prepared. can see that there's a little bit of debris right on the lens, so I'm going to do my best to kind of clean this thing up. Now, it may not be perfect for you, but I'm going to do everything I can to give you a good quality picture. This is not the highest quality microscope, I can tell you that, but it is pretty impressive for the given price. And so, coupled all together, turning on my camera mode, this should do exactly what we need it to. So now, getting into this, there you can see the very fine, refined edge of this Mora carving knife. Now, there are a couple of little funny spots here and there. However, that could be just simply like fuzz or debris. But as I scroll along here, for the most part, you will see that this edge is just mighty refined. So a brand new knife right out of the box and being a Mora, that Scandi grind, you can see this blade is absolutely perfect. So trying to get a quick look at this with the naked eye. Obviously this is not the easiest, but you can basically see that the edge does appear to be very refined the way the light is reflecting off of it. And pretty much uniform the entire way. Now again we were looking at this through a microscope so you're really not able to see any of those chunks that we had noted but if I look very very close I really can't see much however on the tip you can see a little bit of fuzz so let's take one more quick look through the microscope get a gander at what that fuzz looks like. So here is the fuzz. I mean, that is insane. When you look at how detailed that is, I mean, that is such a tiny, tiny little piece of fuzz that at this point is basically filling the screen. I mean, that is absolutely spectacular. You can see, look at the blade, you can see the little tiny grind marks actually are just gigantic here. That is crazy. And just running down the blade, again, for such a refined edge, it still looks maybe just a touch jagged, just a touch. But what about now for the Buck Inferno? Well, first, let's just take a look at the edge and see what we can see. So getting into it here, for the most part, when you're looking at that micro bevel, it looks really pretty good. I mean, if you look up here towards the belly, right in here where my thumb is, you can see some little chunks. I mean, but at the grand scheme of things, you can see the light reflecting right there couple little chunks but the rest of it is generally in very good shape I mean, I would say it's very good shape but what does the microscope say so let's see what we see what will we come across so I'm working towards the tip of the knife here so far, not too bad. And again, you can see the grind. Now we are literally looking only at the micro bevel. I believe the very bottom of your screen might be the edge of the micro bevel. And then this entire thing here is that micro bevel. 
I'm just working right along that edge towards the tip. So far, so good. So at this point, we're getting very close to the actual tip of the knife, which you'll probably see momentarily. And boom, whoa. So take a look at that. Right there. I mean, look at those chunks. This is right up towards the tip of the blade. So which, oh man, that is an actual like shred of steel. That is crazy. I mean, that is literally, oh, look at the tip of the blade. All beat up. That's sick. I mean, just the whole tip of the blade there has little chunks of metal coming right off of it. I mean, you cannot see that with your naked eye. Hold on a sec. I mean, there's no way. There's no way I would ever be able to see that. It's incredible. And my eyes are very good. Um, let's get back here. I mean, that is a straight up shred of metal. And the tip here is just gnarly. I mean, definitely beat up pretty good. So, I mean, that's that's incredible. The fact that I literally can't see that with my naked eye, and the fact that this thing picks that up. This is a one dollar microscope, like one dollar. That's nuts. So I started this up towards the belly of the blade, but let's work our way back. Now there were a couple of sections that I saw that had a little bit of a chunk in them. I'd be curious to see what that looks like if the tip of the blade has that much obvious damage under the microscope. So getting back into this here, you'll see the edge. Now I am just beyond the belly of the blade here. And you can see as I work my way down, here are some obvious micro serrations, which is pretty crazy. I don't know if that to me doesn't look like metal. That looks like maybe cloth. Continuing down. Woo. Now that is pretty significant. So some definite significant little chunks in there. And some more. So this is what a blade looks like after heavy use over months of use and then most recently just that heavy session with the cardboard. Now I'd be curious to see what actual rolls look like. I mean this to me is like chunks of actual metal coming off which is pretty impressive to see. I mean just wild in terms of what this looks like and my ability to actually see it here in the microscope but definitely a cool experiment and something that's a unique look at this. Some more pretty significant chunks continuing down. Just doing my best to keep this somewhat in focus. This is not the easiest thing to do. There's some good ones there. This lens coupler is uh, kind of letting go on me. You can see my picture is wandering off. That is the one real annoying thing about this. This two-way tape is not doing a good job right now, so I am struggling a little bit now where this blade is carbon steel. Obviously, it's sticking to this. Um, this is a magnetic coupler, so in that regard, I got to pull the lens off and this is the coupler so I really need to get this kind of back in place here now it does keep continuing to let go which is just a little bit frustrating but kind of comes with the territory and better to struggle with it a little bit and actually have it than to not have it at all so the other thing is my phone after filming is warming up which is probably making the actual double-sided tape just a little bit gummy 
So now, just finalizing things, this is getting just a touch awkward with the layout here, but getting towards the back of the blade, which doesn't get used nearly as much as the tip of the blade. The seat of the knife is in a slightly bit better condition overall. So I'd say that's closer towards the factory edge, the overall original sharpness. But that to me was a very interesting setup there. Really neat to see the overall quality of the steel after all that use. So all right guys, there you have it. A quick look at a few knives, including this Buck 830 Inferno. The main point being now you can see the micro serrations and why when you go to do your cutting tasks through the paper, hear that little stutter there? I mean, don't get me wrong, this thing is still pretty damn sharp. Like I said, when you look at it with your naked eye, not too shabby, but you can hear some of those stutters in there. And that is those micro serrations getting in the way of a really refined and clean edge. So I think that was pretty cool. Obviously, good quality sharpening techniques can take that right out of there. For the most part, I can tell that I can do the bulk of the work simply with more of a strop and even a fine ceramic rod, so not a lot of damage here for the given amount of work that we've done. But when you compare it to something like this Mora that hasn't even been used, pretty much laser perfect, no snagging, no tearing, goes through like butter. So Anyway, very intriguing, definitely interesting, and something I got into tonight that I wasn't necessarily even expecting. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.